with Mercedes struggling for rear-end stability during pre-season testing in 2021, and seemingly slower than Red Bull, you can't help but think back to the last time it appeared to be in trouble ahead of the season. Some look back at 2019, when Mercedes looked slower than Ferrari in Barcelona testing only to dominate the season opening Australian Grand Prix, as evidence that come this year's first race it will simply take out the metaphorical sandbags and win easily. But there are many myths and half-truths about exactly what happened to create that set of circumstances in 2019. It certainly wasn't some elaborate game of sandbagging, instead it reflected the way Mercedes maximised its development time and optimised its testing strategy. That's a very different set of circumstances to what we're seeing this year. Make sure you subscribe to The Race so you don't miss any of our F1 coverage, and ring the notifications bell so you're the first to know about any new releases. One thing that 2019 and 2021 do have in common is that small but significant aerodynamic rule changes have caused problems. The Mercedes troubles this year appear to be down to the set of four rule changes designed to cut rear downforce, which include the triangular cut in the rear of the floor and the elimination of floor slots. In 2019, rules simplifying the front wings and limiting the geometry of the end plates were introduced. This was to tackle the problem of turbulent air by mitigating the outwash effect, not entirely successfully. Given the significant impact the 2019 rules had on the aerodynamic concept of the car, Mercedes decided to repeat a strategy it had also used two years earlier, when the higher downforce, wider cars were adopted. Then it ran a basic car in the first test, with big changes to come. In 2019, Mercedes decided to run an aerodynamic specification signed off the previous November, for exactly the same reason, the advantages it gave in terms of development. This allowed it to manufacture all of the parts required for the first test early and clear the way for a major upgrade at the second and final test. Mercedes technical director James Allison explained the thinking behind this at the end of the season. The plan originated in the realisation of how big the impact of the 2019 aerodynamic changes was, when the first wind tunnel runs of the modified car showed a 25% downforce loss. Given the development slope was so steep, with Allison saying that each week's work could give a time gain of a tenth of a second, the strategy of effectively producing two different cars aero-wise meant it had cleared the decks to produce the most advanced parts possible, both for the second test and then the opening race. The downside was that the donkey work in the first test was done by the more basic car. The first test was therefore dedicated to the more mundane tasks, leaving the second four days of running to apply the new parts and extract the performance. Taken at face value, it was no surprise that Mercedes seemed to be a long way behind in that first test. After all, its car was effectively a time capsule from a much earlier stage of development. While Mercedes was unsure if Ferrari might also introduce upgrades, confidence was high that it would make a big step forward in the second and final four days of Barcelona testing. Mercedes bolted on the new aerodynamic parts, which included an outwash front wing to sweep more airflow around the outside of the front tyres. This replaced the more basic inwash design used at the first test, which directed airflow inside the tyres but the anticipated performance gains proved elusive until the team started to understand the package well on the final day. While Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel still set the fastest lap time in testing, Lewis Hamilton's best mark was only three thousandths of a second slower. But there was a hint of a bigger advantage for Ferrari, given Vettel gave away several tenths in the final sector on his best lap. Mercedes was clearly far closer with its real deal car, but still, Ferrari was justifiably reckoned to have the edge. Even inside Mercedes there was the same belief. While confidence was high that the trajectory of development would mean it had the best car over the whole season, the expectation was that it would take a little time to show it. And this wasn't just about talking things down in public, but genuinely what they believed privately. It was therefore a surprise to everyone when Lewis Hamilton claimed pole position in Melbourne, seven tenths of a second faster than the lead Ferrari of Vettel. This prefaced a 1-2 finish and the first of eight consecutive victories. Wow. 
It's unsurprising that people still see what happened in 2019 as a game of sandbagging, but the reality was far more complicated than that. But while the myth is of a Mercedes team serenely gliding through pre-season knowing everything would be fine, the reality behind the scenes was a little different. James Allison described it as a fantastic rush of contrasting emotions during winter testing and the early races. Team principal Toto Wolff even gave a rousing speech to personnel at the factory about the scale of the challenge ahead. Mercedes headed to Australia genuinely expecting to be behind Ferrari, but confident of overhauling it during the season. But those concerns were obliterated by its amazing run of success early in the season. Just to underline how much progress Mercedes had made, by the time F1 returned to Barcelona for the Spanish Grand Prix, the fifth race of the season, the Silver Arrows introduced further upgrades that resulted in the team's biggest pace advantage of any race that season. Ferrari, meanwhile, squandered opportunity after opportunity. It's often forgotten that it should have had a 1-2 finish in the second race in Bahrain, but for Charles Leclerc's engine problem and Vettel's spin. But a combination of the car's pace and Ferrari's operational weaknesses meant Mercedes reeled off five consecutive 1-2s in the first five races of the year. So what does 2019 tell us about what might be happening now? Much of the detail is completely different, not least because there was just a single three-day test this year. This means that while there will likely be improvements for the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend, it's not going to be a completely different car in terms of the aerodynamic package. Instead, it's all about Mercedes understanding the reasons for the rear-end instability and fixing it to access the underlying potential. So it all comes down to how easy it is to solve the problem, and it may be about very small details. Arguably, what happened in 2017 is more illuminating. Then, Mercedes looked strong in testing, but so did Ferrari. Inevitably, Mercedes went on to dominate the season despite Ferrari being strong on slower tracks, but in testing, there were struggles with what was described as a lack of robustness with the floor. Once on top of that, which didn't take long, Mercedes set the pace more often than not. But the biggest lesson is it's never as simple as a game of sandbagging. With only three days of testing, on top of the two available 100km promotional days, one of which Mercedes used on the Tuesday after the Bahrain test, teams had a huge amount of work to do this year. Playing games simply waste valuable time, especially given the need to pile as much development resource as possible into the 2022 car for the new regulations. Most likely, inside Mercedes the feeling is similar to what it was in 2019. That is there being work to do, but with the fundamentals in place to come on strong. But that doesn't mean we saw the true pace of Mercedes in testing this year, because it's about running a programme that best suits the team. Much as everyone on the outside would like to see all the cars running in qualifying trim, the big teams simply do not do that. But that doesn't make it part of some elaborate bait and switch trick that will pull the rug out from underneath Red Bull. The most significant impact of Memories of 2019 is that it's a warning of how effective Mercedes is. While it might have a little work to do to re-optimise for the modified aerodynamic regulations, we've only seen the car in action at one track where rear grip and traction is critical and there's enough time to get things working in time for the first race, and if not, for the 22 that should follow. But given Red Bull looks genuinely strong with the RB16B, there's still no guarantee that will put Mercedes back ahead, even if history tells us it should be. Tales of sandbagging might sound fun, but they are reductive, even if top teams are reluctant to show their hands and will hide technical details where possible. As Allison explained when it came to 2019, the reality is always far more complicated. When the full story of Mercedes in 2021 is known, it will doubtless be every bit as fascinating. Let us know in the comments below how you think Mercedes will do this year, and if you enjoyed watching, remember to hit like and subscribe.